fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Because champions are made, not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. The road to success doesn't seem so rocky, does it, knowing that champions are made, not born. Take the life story of Bob Lemon, ace pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Bob played infield at Wilson High. That's where he got his batting eye. He worked instead of merely wishing. To be a champ was Bob's ambition. So he chose Wheaties for top condition. A pitcher now, Bob's made his mark. He still relies on Wheaties' spark. Bob Lemon, a Wheaties regular now for 19 years. A long time to be storing up whole wheat power. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties' plate. Burn it in, Bob! Keep him swinging! He's on his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties, cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! A big red and gold medicine show wagon stood in the square in the small western town of Green Hill. Printed in large letters on the sides of the wagon were the words, The Great Dr. Lewis Pickens, Magic Medicines and Household Sundries. A curious crowd watched expectantly as Dr. Pickens, a jolly rotund man, stepped through drawn curtains onto the improvised stage, formed by dropping the wagon tailboard. Uh, l- ladies and gentlemen... This morning, the people of Green Hill are very fortunate indeed. If I do say so myself, my name is known far and wide. Uh, you mean the law has handbills on you? Maybe his name is Easy Pick. <laughs> now, now, please, please, gentlemen, th- this is my show. You go get your own crowd. Uh, Jimmy, hold up a couple of bottles, huh? Yes, sir. Now, yes, folks. The large bottle of this wonderful magic medicine is yours for only one dollar. Think of it, only one dollar. My young nephew, Jimmy, will go among you with a basket full of these bottles. Hey, uh, going, Jimmy. Clean up. Uncle Louie, there comes a sheriff through the crowd. Uh-oh. Uh, sorry, folks. My young nephew just told me the magic medicine is all sold out for the present. These bottles hold mineral spring water. And I usually give it away with the elixir. You get them inside the wagon, quick. Yes, sir. Hold on there. I want to see a bottle of that stuff. Uh, yes, of course, Sheriff. Jimmy, bring out one of the bottles of spring water for the Sheriff. Yes, Uncle Billy. Here it is. Thank you, son. Here, Sheriff, with my compliments. Right. We give this away as a premium to those who buy the magic elixir when we have it. <laughs> You sure this is one of the bottles you were shown a minute ago? You doubt my integrity, Sheriff? And I'll have you know that the name of Dr. Louis Pickens... Yeah, is yeah, I know. Every but the th- name of Dr. Louis Pickens will be mud if I find out that magic medicine of yours is nothing but colored water. <laughs> now, you better get going, Pickens, now. Uh, very well, very well. Let's pack up, Jimmy. The sheriff appears to be a mite (laughs) unfriendly. All right, boy. Later, Dr. Pickens and Jimmy drove the wagon through a valley. Suddenly, a sound dreaded by every traveler in the far west was heard above the noise of the wagon. (laughs) 
Uncle Louie, look, coming down the slope. They're, they're, they're heading right for this wagon. Give me the reins, quick. Here. A masked man and another Indian coming down the opposite slope. Hang on, Jimmy. Right. Get up. Get up there. As Jimmy clung to the wagon seat, the doctor urged the team to greater speed, and the vehicle bumped and swayed along the rutted trail. Meantime, the small party of Indians turned back as the Lone Ranger and Tonto opened fire. The doctor, intent on holding the team and wagon to the trail, suddenly called out, Jimmy, we'll have to stop! The trail crosses a stream just ahead! The horses can't run through that with the wagon! Ho! Oh, oh, ho there! Oh, ho! Oh. Ho! Now we're in for it, Jimmy! Uncle Louie, the Indians are gone! They went over the ridge out of sight! The masked man and Indian with them chased them away! Here they come now! I hope they're friendly! Anyway, the Indians were driven away! Good thing you didn't try to drive your team and wagon through that stream at the rate they were going. Uh, you're safe now. The Indians have gone. Uh, that mask, if you can... We came only to help you. We're not outlaws. Well, uh, thanks for what you did. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. I don't know why you're masked, but you saved us from possible harm. Gosh, you and that Indian with you, you sure scared him away, mister. Uh, by the way, I'm Dr. Pickens. This is my nephew, Jimmy. Jimmy's rather young to be traveling around the country with a medical show. I'm 12, mister, and I like to be being with Uncle Louie. I help him a lot. Indeed he does, sir. I'm the only relative Jimmy has, so of necessity, I take it with me. Oh, I understand. Does your product have any real medicinal value, doctor? Of course, of course. Well, here, here. Have a bottle of my magic elixir. Try it yourself. Thanks. I may try it sometime. Uh, do you sell much of this? Uncle Louie doesn't hardly sell any, mister. When we stop someplace and the sheriff comes along, I have to hide the bottles quick. Mm. Evidently, you haven't much faith in your magic medicine, Doc. Of course I do, sir. Well, then why do you hide it when a sheriff comes around? When we stopped at our first town a month ago, the sheriff came to the wagon during my uh, performance. He confiscated all the magic elixir I had on hand and broke every bottle. Regardless of my claim to the contrary... He said it was only colored water. Other medicine shows have cheated the people in this territory by selling colored water. It's uh, risky to fool them a second time. The liquid you have in that bottle, sir, is a medicinal mixture. I served as an apothecary's apprentice in my youth before I studied to be a doctor and learned a great deal about medicinal roots and herbs and so forth. Oh, what's it good for, doctor? I... I haven't had the opportunity to observe its effect on an ill person, but I, I know it's a good tonic and should be effective for the alleviation of fever. Well, that's interesting. And how how far are we from the next town? Do you know, sir? A green hill is about three miles south of here. Pat and I'll ride along with you to the edge of town. Fine, fine. Those Indians made me a little nervous. I'll go to my horse. <laughs> here, Tonto. A bottle of magic medicine for you. <laughs> Um, maybe me see sick cow sometime, huh? <laughs> uh, me put bottle in saddlebag. Good. Easy, steady, big cow. Easy, 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 Ready, doctor? Yep, we're ready. Get up there. Get up Come on. Come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto left Dr. Pickens and Jimmy at the edge of town and returned to the hills. Because of unrest among the braves of an Apache tribe in a nearby valley, the Lone Ranger disguised his features under his mask in case of trouble. Then he and Tonto spent several days scouting and watching. One evening, they returned to their camp after observing the Indians' activities from a ridge overlooking the valley. Oh, 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 easy scout, easy fella. What did you make of the ceremonial dance the Apaches were doing, Tonto? Them do dance at sundown to great spirit. Ask them, give sign, tell Apache who bring trouble to tribe. You think they may go on the warpath? Maybe. If them think settlers bring trouble, them go on warpath. We go back later. Watch. If them do war dance, then we know. Easy, Silver. Steady. Uh, him give warning, maybe. Yes. Throw your guns away. Do not reach for guns. Many braves in circle round you. Apaches. Surrounded our camp. Don't draw. Uh -huh. We raise hands and signs of peace. The Lone Ranger and the Potter stood with their hands raised, palms upward, in the sign of friendship and peace. 
as 12 braves moved in on foot and stood around them menacingly. One of them stepped forward and spoke. Me, Luco, son of Chief Big Crow. We watch. See you spy on village. We're friends, Luco. We come in peace. No. Trouble come to Apaches. Two braves die of fever. Chief have fever. Masked white men who ride white horse. Come as sign that pale face to blame for Apache sickness. Take guns. Tie him to horse. Now, what do we do? It's useless to resist. As several husky braves stepped forward, the Lone Ranger, realizing it would mean instant death to resist so many, allowed them to disarm him and Tonto and tie them. He was playing for time, hoping they'd find means of escape later. After the masked man and Indian were tied to their horses, Luko spoke again. We take you to Apache village now. If Chief, my father, not get well, you die at stake. The Apaches go on warpath. I get ya! We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Fullback Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. As captives of the Apaches, the Lone Ranger and Toto were taken to the village in the valley. They were taken to Big Crow's wigwam under guard and forced to watch as the Apache medicine man performed ritualistic ceremonies beside the ailing chief. Finally, the medicine man stopped and turned. He glared at the two captives, then spoke ominously to Luko, who stood beside them. Chief, they grow not better. Him burdened with fever, grow weak. We take prisoners, tie them to stakes. Maybe chief go to great spirit soon. Uh, wait, Luko. Maybe great spirit send us to help, chief. Now you help. We bring magic medicine in bottle. You think it good? Can't do harm if it's only water. It might do good. We must play for time. Uh -huh. Where magic medicine? In the saddlebag of my Indian friend's horse. Let me give it to Big Crow. Uh, you get bottle. You take magic medicine first, then give to Chief. All right. Luco left the wigwam and soon returned with a bottle of magic elixir Dr. Pickens had given to the Lone Ranger. Here, bottle. I got it. Me untie hands a mask, man. There. Now you take some medicine, then give chief. Very well. With hostile eyes watching, the Lone Ranger put the bottle to his lips and took a gulp of the bitter mixture. Then he stepped forward, and as the medicine man lifted the chief's head, he gave some to Big Crow. There. The magic words on the bottle say to give him more in an hour. We stay. We watch. If medicine not do good by dawn, you die at stake. Every hour for three hours, the Lone Ranger gave the chief some of the mixture. He and Toto had little hope that it would do much good, and they watched for a chance to make an escape, but they were tied and guarded constantly. Toward dawn, the chief opened his eyes and called weakly. Luko, Luko, my son. Yeah. My father know me. His fever is broken. Yeah. Eagerly, Luko and the medicine man bent over the sick chieftain. Then the medicine man spoke. Chief, much better. 
Evil fever gone. Magic medicine you brought, mask man. Do good. Untie them. Quickly, the braves untied the ropes that bound Toto and the Lone Ranger. Then Luko stepped forward again. Here are your guns. You have spoken truth. Great Spirit sent you in peace to bring magic medicine to Chief, my father. That's good. He come quick from town. Many pale faces get him evil fever. Some die. It's not good we attack where evil fever spreads. Apaches not go on warpath. Chief, get well. And fever gone from Apache village. You heard, Tuttle? The fever is broken out in town. Ah. We are free to go, Luko. Ah, you go. You go in peace. Maybe have more magic medicine. Help Paleface get well. The Lone Ranger realized he must find Dr. Pickens at once. Taking some Apaches with them to rush some of the medicine back to town, the masked man and Indian hurriedly followed the trail of the big wagon. Meantime, some miles south of Green Hill, Dr. Pickens and Jimmy rode slowly along the trail, heading for another small town. Gosh, Uncle Louie, we didn't do very well in those last two places. I know, Jimmy. Maybe the magic elixir isn't any good after all. Son, if you're going against me, I might as well give up entirely. Oh, I'm tired of traveling, Uncle Louie. I sure wish you were like a real doctor. You know, lived someplace and took care of people and all that. Jimmy... I am a real doctor, and as for staying in one spot, I tried that one, son, but couldn't make a living. I was more interested in finding a new medicine that would bear my name. I tried to... Come on behind us, more Indians! Oh, we'll have to make a race for it, Jimmy. Get up there! Get up there! Once more, the red and gold wagon bumped and swayed along the trail, as the doctor, certain this time they'd be captured or killed, lashed the horses with a whip. Get up! Get up there! Uncle Louie, Uncle Louie, wait! The masked man is with us! The masked man? Oh, 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 but how did they... You uh, gave me a bottle, remember? It cured the chief. We want all we can carry. You turn around and follow us back to Green Hill. And there's no time to lose. It was almost noon when the Lone Ranger entered the sheriff's office and identified himself. So you're the Lone Ranger, eh? Mister, I know you came to help, but even old Dr. Carey can't do much. And your office with some Apaches who offered to help us bring the medicine. I've seen this particular medicine work, Sheriff, at the Apache village. I suggest you have Dr. Carey try it on the fever victims. Mister, on your say-so, we'll try anything. Let's get that medicine. Dr. Pickens' medicine was taken to the meeting house, where the patients were hospitalized. Though both old Dr. Carey and the Sheriff were dubious, they administered the medicine to the sufferers and waited for the results. That night, Dr. Carey spoke to the sheriff. Sheriff, the mixture the masked man brought works wonders. It knocks this mountain fever out of a patient's system within hours. You mean that that magic elixir really does the trick? That's right. But we need more. It's running out. On the way here. He should arrive most any time. How about I'll go meet the wagon? Toto, they need more medicine. There come wagon now. I saw the wagon coming when I looked out the window. Oh, I've seen that wagon before. That's the medicine man I ordered out of town a few days ago. Oh, oh, Come on, Jimmy. Right well, how, how did the medicine work? Ask Dr. Carey. He'll tell you. Dr. Pickens, I never saw anything like it. You have a wonderful discovery there. What? Due to your medical mixture, the epidemic has been stopped. Golly, Uncle Louie. The magic elixir is good after all. The doctor needs more. Of course, of course. There's plenty on the wagon. In fact, nearly all I ever made is there. Never did sell much. Didn't get the chance. Jimmy, show Dr. Carey where it is. Yes, sir. Right this way, doctor. Yes, hey, Jimmy. Reckon I was a little hasty the other day, Dr. Pickens, when I ordered you out of town. Look at it, Sheriff. You're not the only lawman who told us to move on. Well, if it hadn't been for your... If medicine. it hadn't been for our masked friend, Sheriff, 
Nobody would ever know my mixture was of any value. He must have had a lot of faith in me to use it on an Indian chief under such tense circumstances. Thank you, Dr. Pickens. It was because of the rather hopeless situation that I decided to take a chance on your mixture. I gave Dr. Terry some more bottles, Uncle Louie. Gosh, I knew they'd like your magic elixir when they tried it. Well, I... <clears throat> I'm glad you had faith in me, Jimmy. You'll be cited for this in medical circles, Dr. Pickens. Remarkable discovery. Remarkable. Uncle Louie, what does cited mean? Does it mean you'll get some money for the medicine so we'll have lots to eat? And now, Jimmy, we mustn't think of money when we're helping the sick. I'm sure you'll be well compensated for the medicine, Doctor. Yeah, he sure will. And, Doctor, if you'd care to stay and work with me here in Green Hill on research, I'd like to have you as an associate. You'll be well paid. Golly, Uncle Louie. Then we'll have a home. Yes. Yes, of course, Jimmy. Uh, I accept your offer, Dr. Carey. Good, good. Now let's go administer to the patient, shall we? All right. I... But first, I want to thank the mask man for all he did for us. It's because of him that we... Say, say where, where is he? He went to the hit rack with the Indian. They're leaving. Here he is. Here he is. Come up. Adios, everybody. Goodbye. 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 Oh. Gosh, he's sure wonderful. I hope I grow up to be like him. Well, I hope you do, son. You couldn't wish for a finer thing than to be like the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendel Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Monday